Uh, today, it's all about mixing and uh, production process that I'm going through at the moment for a uh, mix of a track. Hey guys, another edition of Mind Lab Studios. Uh, today, it's all about mixing and uh, production process that I'm going through at the moment for a uh, mix of a track um, that I'm working on. Uh, this is um, the main club mix. I haven't done the deep house, or well, say deep house, I haven't done the house mixes as yet and dub mixing. Stuff like that, I'm going to be working on that. I might add that as a part two, or you might see it tagged on to the rest of this video. Who knows? Um, but no, I just wanted to share something with you in terms of how how I, was, how I came about um, doing this. Worked on this for a couple of days. Not entirely, you know, not full days, obviously. But um, this is a project that started out in... Um, Ableton Live and as I mentioned before I might I'll probably start something in Ableton Live um, and then decide what I'm doing with it next reason being uh, I can be a bit more flexible with live I can pitch it up pitch it down in terms of um, in, in terms of tempo and stuff like that and all the loops will sit or just everything just uh, it's just a lot quicker to well, for my workflow, it's it's I, I find it faster to move around um, once I've got an idea of what I'm what I'm going to do, and this is just a real this is a this is a real club dance track as such, probably one of the more commercial ones that I've worked on recently, and uh, so it's taken me away from my usual comfort space of um, Afro house, deep house um hip hop and r and b into the more commercial realm just to see how it would be as a mix and see how it would how it would come out so yeah um I'll play you a bit of it I don't want to play too much give it away um but yeah let's just have a quick whiz of uh one of the tracks well the track itself I'll jump around a bit um just so you can hear it so that's a track. Um, I've got it running in Pro Tools at the moment. I did what would be a um, done a couple of mixes. So what I've got here is just the stereo. You can see it actually. Just got the stereo mix going on and. The reason I've done that, uh, I tend to, I'm mixing Pro Tools and I'm mixing Isotope or, or mastering my Isotope. Um, but the reason for doing that is just to compare the results and see which one which one I like. Always find that it varies and I'm not quite sure why. Pro Tools does add a little bit of, I know it's all through the computer, but it seems to add some sort of coloration to it to give it a, it feels like a warmer sound. Someone can correct me on this, whether it's true or not. I don't know. But when I'm in Pro Tools, I always find that my results are warmer than other um, other platforms. Don't know why. Maybe it's the way that I use it. And I sort of, you, you probably fall into a habit of tweaking things in a particular way. But that's what happens um, <clears throat> with me. So... Yeah, it started out. It started out as a. Let's see, is this working? What's going on here? Oh, I've got it on solo. So let's flick that back. <coughs> let's turn it up a bit because the levels are obviously lower. In they were obviously lower in um, Ableton, and here you go. So yeah, just a quick glimpse of the track. what's going on there I won't lift it up too much the uh, 
once or twice, tweak it a bit, there you go. And so you can see uh, the MIDI files, uh, audio, and all the rest of it. So it started out in there. There's a lot of tracks in here because what I've done um, for sound wise and stuff like that, I have layered it and it's it's layered quite heavily. So there are several bases going on. And what I've done is to, and it, there's obviously some string, there's a lot of string sounds going on. Um, yeah, strings, all sorts um, in this one. But what I did was to um, try and just get a feel just to uh, get that warmth in there. So I've got for, for the keyboard sounds for um, more the music parts, it's got Rhodes in there. It's got um, an equivalent of a Moog. Um, it's got various synths, which I picked up in in live. And this is standard live stuff. I haven't, um, I haven't done anything uh, fancy. There are no, you know, super duper plugins used in or anything like that. And this is really just Ableton Live 11. And when I exported it, I exported all the effects and everything that in, like that into Pro Tools. So all those files that you saw, I um, I shifted out into, I exported the whole lot, all the files as, I think it was about 40, just over 40 tracks and um, shifted those out into Pro Tools. Let me see if I can find it a second. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Here we go. Okay. Uh, should I save or not? Save it. Doesn't matter. There we go. So uh, it ended up in here. Uh, it looks like there were just <laughs> the, the signal. The signals are quite low, um, but I really wasn't worried about that. It's only sort of some of them. Uh, the more the, the lower sounds were quite high, as in drums, uh, not high, but um, higher. Um, bass. You got. Um, I added in a, another seven oh seven kick. Uh, and it, the, the drums are interesting because when I when I sorted out the drums first, hang on, I'll play it from here. I'll just do a quick snippet. You can hear the difference now, isn't it? So, yeah, interesting. So, pro, yeah, so when I... Uh, Brought this into Pro Tools, uh, had all the effects on it and stuff like that because I didn't want to do it in live and then have to add all the effects in afterwards again and try and remember what I did. I just ported them across because I was happy with the sound. It was really about final tweaks and edits and all that kind of stuff. So once I got it into Pro Tools, it was about the mix. So I brought it into Pro Tools and uh, uh, started to pan various sounds into different directions and uh some left some right some center uh pan hard left pan hard right and all the rest of it added eq um there's a bunch of um i didn't overdo it because i was quite happy with the sound but you know like uh i mean i tend to use the eq7 band the standard one and then i will use the cla76 quite a bit and the cla2 that the CLA uh, 2A, you can see it there, I think. Yeah, you can see it. The CLA 2A adds a, a nice punch to the sound. Um, so it immediately fattens it up. So oh, that's why I wasn't too worried about the level. It doesn't add any distortion or anything like that. It just gives it that warm character that I'm after. So in terms of... Uh, sound i mean there are only, as, as you can see it's quite sporadic there isn't the, the the main elements were eq7 band the reason why i use eq7 i like to control the frequencies and be able to be flexible around um cutting off the low end cutting off the high increasing the the the, the, the high frequency shelf and all that kind of stuff so um i will always put the seven um, eq7 on there to so that i can move it around quite a lot so let's see if i've got something which uh has has been dramatically altered uh let's see what does that relate to 
Uh, let's see. Here we go. So, for example. Vocals. Oops, CPU error. I was exp wow, that hasn't happened in a while. And that is on my Mac Mini. I've killed it. I think I've got too many things open because um, I've got uh, three different. Shouldn't do it. I've got about. I've got Pro Tools running. I've got Live running, and I have got um, all my mix. I've got my Isotope running. So I might have killed the machine. Never mind. Let's see if it plays again. Uh, save and quit. Uh oh. I'll do quit and save. I'll come back to that. So when I uh, mixed it, I just, yeah, EQ, little bit of EQ, little bit of compression in places, um, tailed it off, made sure that there were no overlapping frequencies as such. So there, was, there wasn't too much demand and, and too much muddiness in the sound. You know, I mixed it out. I then did the mix and uh, I put one into my master chain on Pro Tools and then I did the other one into my isotope application so that I can get a reference between them. So I've mi I've mastered, I've mixed them out to both of them so that I could do a master in Pro Tools and a master in isotope. I know it's a bit of an overkill um, and you don't really need to do that, but I had the time. So I really wanted to see uh, which one uh, came out or sounded uh, better for me? I haven't. I've played it in here, and uh, at the moment, I'm leaning towards the isotope. Not because of anything to do with Pro Tools. It's just I use a specific uh, chain on Pro Tools, which sounded right at the time. The only thing I found was it it ducked a bit, and that's why I thought, oh, let me do an isotope mix. And I think that's to do with my compression. So I might have I might have given it a, too much of a, a compression um, on on the final um, on the final mix and stuff. So that was interesting. I'm not quite sure. Well, I do know why it happened, but I need to spend a bit of time on that. So what I'm going to do is compare the mixes. Oh, let's see. I'm trying to open it back up again. Uh, let's go for the master. Let's open that up. There's less resources on there, so I can... Oops, sorry. A bit loud. As you can see, <laughs> the master version is a, is a lot higher. So, yeah, I've just... Uh, it, it's, it's not clipping red. Don't worry about it. But, yeah, as I played it... Let's... Do... Sounding all right. Let's shift you round a little bit. And in terms of, I've just got EQ. I have, I've taken that one out. Um, I had a, a SSL bus, uh, SSL in there. I've got my CLA2 and um, Maxim. I generally put a maxim on it just to give it, and I'll set it to pop limiter, and then I'll just gauge it based on that, turn it down where required, and and that's all I've done so far. This is only the first pass of the mix, so it's one of those ones where I want to get a get a, a mix done and be able to play elsewhere and see how it sounded. And what I'll do tonight is compare the Pro Tools one against the Isotope one, see how they sound, uh, make sure the levels are right, make sure that it balances out okay, there are no issues, Com uh, reference it against other tracks uh, uh, that I've got in that genre, uh, dance clubby tracks, and, and just make sure it's got it's sitting in the right place and it's, it's, it's in the right space when it comes to that type of track. So it hits the clubs nicely. I mean, playing it how loud in the studio, obviously no issues, but it's, how does it transfer to different mediums? How does it transfer to your phone? How does it transfer to your car stereo? How does it transfer to um, your hi-fi? All those, all the usual stuff that you would generally do. 
and and that's what I'll be working on and just tweak it. Once I've done that, I know then I'm happy with the sound and I'll park it, leave it, and uh, then I'll work on. Um, I've got yeah, I've got my. I want to do a nice, a soulful house mix. Well, as soulful as it can get, and then I'll do a dub mix based on that. So I should come out with three mixes at the end of it. And they'll be out on Mind Lab at some point. The question is, uh, when? Do I release it this year by the end of 2021? Or do I save it for January 2022? Who knows? That would be an interesting one. Um, hmm. I'm not sure. Not sure. Not sure. Quite tempted to save it. But at the same time, I've got another track that I'm, I'm, I'm working on. So I've got a few other mixes, which uh, all I'm going to do is create a backlog. So they're just coming out one after the other. But we'll see. Uh, I don't know yet. Anyway, that's it for the minute. So I just try to sh show you what I'm working on. Um, quick workflow. Uh, this was all pretty much in the box. Um, as I said, tools used. Um, Ableton Live with the Ableton Push. Uh, Pro Tools. And I use Isotope for mastering and I also did a mix in Pro, um, I'm sorry, a master in Pro Tools as well. Uh, and that's it. Uh, did I add anything else? No, none of my external stuff really, all in the box. So just shows what you can achieve. And nothing special on the plugins. Uh, nothing which were, I mean, yeah, obviously I've purchased a few, but I mean, these were the ones which come through of the package and I just sat there and just tw played around with them, tweaked them. Just wanted to see how far I could push things, and and that seemed to seem to work anyway. Um, I had something good to start with, which is always the case. As long as you've got a good starting point, then you you can, um, yeah, you, it's 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 easier than that. And yeah, there's lots of layers in this track. I really want you to create that wall of sound where you know you when you're listening to it, you're hearing different things each time you listen to it, not just um, keeping it loose where you've got, I don't know, one main voice um, going on. Um, there's layers of keyboards, there's layers of pads, there's layers of strings, there's little twinkly sounds going on in the background, all sorts of stuff when you listen deeply. But um, I might save those and bring those out in the in the other mixes just so that you can hear all the other elements and then they will suit um, the house mixes and stuff that I'll do. So until then, I shall catch you later. I think that is going to be a Vanderpool's World project. I've, lab I've labelled it as Vanderpool's World, so it'll probably come out as that um, fairly soon. So look out for it. All right, guys, uh, have a good one, and I shall catch you soon. See you later.